So uh, we are officially just, I mean, we are so in the weeds on mock drafts. Like mock season becomes every year bigger and bigger. There are so many sites and so many TV outlets and so many radio outlets that have mock drafts that you can't even keep up with them anymore. Chuck, I'm at the point now where I just cherry pick the mocks I like. And I know none of them are going to come true. That's not the point of a mock draft. You're not supposed to because the guy predicting the draft or the lady can actually give the correct, the better pick, but the Seahawks decide to pick a guy who's out after two years. I'll say it to you this way. The mock drafts will be right about one and two. There's a pretty decent chance they'll be right about number three in this draft and in most drafts unless there's a trade that upsets the apple cart. Like every mock you see right now is going to tell you Joe Burrow's going one. Every mock you see then will say Chase Young two, and then Okuda seems to be the consensus three for the Lions. Here's the kick, though, Matt. When the Lions trade to move up one spot so they can actually take Tua. Or Chase Young. They take Tua, which means he didn't go to the Redskins, which means you got Detroit and their pick wrong, plus whoever you would assign Tua to. Well, yeah. Like the Dolphins. So you just missed three picks. I'll add it the same way. If they were to take a Chase Young, everybody had Chase to the Redskins. Now the Redskins move out. They're like, there's just it changes everything so again i'm cherry picking the mocks i want to root for it yeah. really gets annoying to how many times you have to do the mock drafts i disagree i read five mocks a day i find them so entertaining because i don't attach what's going to happen in most cases to the mocks it, i just yeah. i love to see different opinions on where different uh, analysts think guys are gonna go i love it it's like recruiting predictions or trade yeah. rumors or whatever it's fun to imagine what if and if you read five of these a day there's a chance that you'll have maybe four different what ifs for the falcons that you go Oh, wow, at 16, that'd be cool. Yeah, absolutely right. That's all it is. It's on, on March 10th, it's, oh, that'd be cool. So this one's from uh, UGA Football Live. All right. And again, they have Burrow going one. They have Chase Young two. I have those two. Okuda going three to Detroit. They have Isaiah Simmons going to the Giants at four with two and then landing five to the Dolphins. Ain't taking a corner at three unless you're Champ Bailey. Everybody thinks Okuda's going I'm there. not taking a corner. I, it's Dion, you're not better the GM. be Dion. No, you're not the GM. Um... This is where now you start to get differing opinions 6 through 15 before the Falcons pick. For instance, in this mock, the prediction is Makai Becton, the offensive tackle from Louisville. It's a huge human. 7, Derek Brown to Carolina has been discussed in a lot of places, making a lot of sense there. 8, Andrew Thomas, Georgia offensive tackle to Arizona. And what they write is hysterical. He'll retire in 2035 as the Cardinals' greatest offensive lineman. Uh, nine, Jacksonville takes Tristan Wirfs, the offensive lineman from Iowa. Could play right or left tackle. And then 10, Cleveland would go Jedrick Willis, the offensive tackle at uh, Alabama. So the run on tackles would happen at that point. Six, eight, nine, ten, all tackles. And the wide receivers have not come off the board yet at all. Is that right? So 11, the Jets would take Jerry Judy. 12, Vegas would take Justin Herbert. Jordan Love would go 13 to Indy. Tampa would give you the surprise because I have not seen this anywhere else. The prediction here is Josh Jones, the offensive lineman out of Houston, with Denver then taking the other of the two top wide receivers, C.D. Lamb. Now, do the math on that because this is what I gave you guys last week when I came up with my pseudo mock to try to hope for Javon Kinlaw to go 16. It would take four quarterbacks coming off the board. That's the prediction here. Five offensive tackles. I had four, but they give you five. Two wide receivers, and then I planned for one surprise because there's usually a name that pops in. Because the Givens in this draft to go off the board. Did, did you name a running back either? No. Wow. The Givens in this draft are Chase Young, Okuda, Simmons, and Derek Brown. Folks, we're up to 15. That's 15 picks in the books, and the Falcons haven't drafted, which means as far-fetched as it sounds and as unrealistic as it might be, Javon Kinlaw at 16 – cross every finger and toe that this would happen. The only reason he would be there is teams value offensive line, quarterback, and in this case, oddly, wide receiver, more than the second best defensive tackle in the draft, which would be a dream come true at 16 that Kinlaw is there because he's a top 10 value who would somehow be there in this mock and in my perfect world. In that scenario, you're not lying, but there are just some blanket statements that I want to make, and one of those is, the top two defensive tackles are always gone after 15 picks. You would believe that, now, sure. Now, there are two more accurate statements, and I could say not after 15. The two top tackles are usually gone after like 10 picks if, or after 15 picks, three or four top defensive tackles are gone. But it's never two and 15. Somebody will get left out. I don't know if it's a receiver. I, I don't know if it's maybe I don't 
feel quite as positive about Jordan Love as as I thought I did. Somebody will get left out. You're not having one defensive tackle go in 15 picks. You would. See, here's where I would tell you. I dare say you won't have a 15-pick window in the entire draft. Hold on. This is where, though, the third or fourth quarterback is always going to be overdrafted more than the second-best defensive tackle, though, and that's your hope as the Falcon fan as you look at this mock. Just for a couple of other reference points in the first round, the wide receivers start to fly off the board. Later in the first round, Henry Ruggs, 20. Justin Jefferson, 21, to Philly. T. Higgins, 22, to Buffalo. Love him. Um, uh, Georgia fans, DeAndre Swift, late in the first round, 26, to Miami. Then you start looking at the second round picks, which we criticize Thomas a lot. And I think any GM is going to get criticism when his teams are seven to nine. He's had a lot of good and a lot of a lot of bad, which goes with the territory. When you're a GM for 12 years, which, again, 12 years doesn't happen in the league going on 13. The move he made to trade Sanu for a second round pick was the biggest highway robbery the league has seen in years. Because that 55th pick is so valuable. As much as we all love Sanu, it made no sense what New England was doing. Well, they were so desperate. Everybody knows what it was. They, they had to way, Still way, 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 way overpay. They, yeah. Terrible deal, but they couldn't use the second round pick to possibly get to a Super Bowl during last season. They couldn't use Sano. Here's what I find funny, again, just about this mock. They have A.J. Epinesa at 45 to Tampa, right in the range where the Falcons will pick in the second round at 47. The Falcons would take Josh Uche. Edge rusher Michigan, which you're going to see his his profile, and you're going to say, wow, there's a lot of Vic to him size-wise, 6'2", 250, um, every like breakdown you see has a lot of Vic to it. He's explosive off the edge, not a ton of moves, can get eaten up at the point of attack, those type of things. But in the second round, it's about the value. And if you could find a guy who could play two downs because he can rush the passer well, rack up five, six, seven sacks, you would take it in a heartbeat. The Falcons in this mock come right back at 55 with J.K. Dobbins. <gasps> if, that, if this threesome <gasps> happened the way that they're predicting, and that's why I'm rooting, I'm cherry-picking this mock. My goodness. Kinlaw, Uche, Dobbins, now I've got cheap labor. Starting defensive tackle next to Grady, cheap. Edge rusher, who I hope could play three downs, but I'm hoping pass downs, if nothing else, cheap. And my starting running back, third round, cheap. Or second round, excuse me, in J.K. Dobbins. And it's only like another 20 picks, and we're on the board again. Aha! Look who's on board with this. At number 78, the Falcons would take the big Trout. Out of Troutman, the uh, tight end out of Dayton, who's 6'6". 253. Blew up Mobile. He did. Yeah. He was the talk of Mobile. So in the third round, he might have been a fourth round type of a guy, but Troutman got all that attention in Mobile. His numbers, size-wise, compare very favorably to Austin Hooper. And the only reason I bring it up, if you put an athletic big at tight end here, no offense to Austin, who I was a big fan of, you're going to succeed. If you have any football acumen to you with Calvin and Julio and a quarterback like Matt, and now if you work in a decent enough run game, whoever the tight end in, a tight end is going to be in the Falcon offense. It's going to have the best matchup on the team. You're going to have so many open spaces to work with if, that, if that's the first four picks. And, again, the likelihood is none of those will be right. Oh, I'd be so thrilled. That's the one I'm rooting for so much. And this is not like like Dayton in basketball, Matt. You realize you could be looking at your 2020 national oh, champions. Yeah. They could be a one seed. Yeah, that's not what it is. In football, they play at the lower level. Like they play Valparaiso and Stetson and teams like that. And so there is a major, major, mm, yeah, three majors, major question about level of competition. Because at that level, when you're six, seven, you're taller and bigger and faster than everybody. It's a little bit like Friday nights. You can just kind of yeah. lean on somebody and you get the better of him. The, um, point of all this would be if those things happened in the first three rounds boy the fourth round becomes a pick your own adventure you could go corner you could take interior o-line you could then back it up with another edge rusher you could go linebacker there are so many right answers if the board plays out in your favor and the likelihood is it won't but that's what i'm rooting for in the worst way i hope these folks at the uga football live are 100 percent correct on this one you're talking about somebody like a uh, like jr reed in the fourth uh, sure. rounds just or, a, it's a it's kind of a not a bonus but it's we feel like we address some some significant needs that can step in and play and we'll you either need maybe a third guy in a rotation yeah. or you need a third guy because you think that a starter is leaving next year could absolutely be the case